Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these bubbles. Now this is a pretty simple version of a bubble. You can get into much more detail, but meh. We just want some simple bubbles. It's just a card. It's not a Picasso or a Monet or a Van Gogh. Um, <clears throat> I stamped this with some stamps from Fairy Hugs, and I'll show you that process as well, just because I don't want to leave you out. But the main the main goal here is to learn to do these bubbles. And I wanted to show you, because I've been kind of practicing trying to do it on a darker background. And I found a technique, I'm still working on perfecting it, it's not as easy. So we're going to start with the light background one, and we'll start with the background itself. Before I get started, though, I wanted to show y'all, and the reason why my fingers are gross, I got this product today. This is Sparks Watercolor Power Powder, Super Pigmented Powder, and boy, am I having fun with that. This is just the green color. What's the green color called? Terra Verde, another one with the green color. This one is the Wisteria and the Turquoise. Y'all, I'm telling you, and this one, oh, oh. So I sprinkled on some, this is also the Turquoise and the Wisteria, and I sprinkled on some, um, what is this stuff called? Yeah, you know, perfect, perfect pearls. In the pearl color oh man can you see that shimmer now there's your galaxy super simple douse the water sprinkle it on move it around you're done anyway let's get on with what we came here for okay some supplies you're gonna need <laughs> look if you don't invest in anything ever do invest in these um let's see let me zoom out a little here we go these are the infinity circle dies from hero arts there are so many uses for these things i mean that's probably the best investment i've made and what i've done here is i have taken just a let me zoom out here just it it's it was i don't know it was a die set of some sort and um, I used the wrapper, and I took and cut circles, and I kept the, you know, kept the negatives and the positives, and this is what we're going to use to work as kind of a stencil for our bubbles. Uh, this one I lost the, I lost the piece. It's around here somewhere. So this is just a piece of sticky note, and then on the backs of these I've folded up more of that sticky note just so they can kind of stick. You're going to need those. You're going to need ink. Uh, I chose for this one tumbled glass, kitsch flamingo, and wilted violet. You're going to need a white pigment ink. This one is really good. I like this one. This is from Ranger. I've tried this one. I've tried the unicorn white from um, is it Memento. Um, you're going to need some finger daubers. If you don't have finger daubers, you can use the high-tech tool of a uh, Viva paper towel. going to need a couple of brushes. going to need a pencil. And I'm using an art pencil, but you can use a regular pencil. And you're going to need the eraser. eraser. And you're going to need a piece of paper to daub your daubers off on. And... A new piece of cardstock. This is that cheapo Amazon cardstock that I like to use. And I'm going to start with color blending my background here. Let me get everything situated. Y'all, you know I'm new to this, so I just want to make sure you can see. I'll just throw everything everywhere until I get it in good view. And there we go. There we go. And zoom in a bit. There we go. Sorry about that. So, what I'm going to start with is my lighter color of the Kitsch Flamingo. 
and I'll set it here on my little grippy pad. And for this part, you're going to want a super, super light touch. So start off the edge and then just start blending in back and forth. We don't want a lot of color. You want to keep this nice and pastel -y and ethereal and rainbowy, not rainbowy, and mermaid y, Blech, whatever. So I'm going to do top hat. You see, you can barely see any color, but it's there. I'm going to flip it over, use another one of my thingies to hold on to this. And I'm going to get, oops, and don't worry if you mess up. Who cares, right? It's your piece of work. And just lightly ink blend. And I'm leaving the center for the tumble glass. Now these are the three colors I'm going to be using in the bubbles. So you want to kind of keep in mind when you're doing your background that you'll want your bubbles right within that same range. So I'm just going to go in and do the center. I'm not worried about that outside because I'll be trimming it off. But even so, it'll still look good. And just blend that tumble glass up into the Kish Flamingo. And there we've got a simple background. That's going to kind of represent water right there. And now for the fun part. Got that done. Now you have to decide what orientation you want this. I want this this way, obviously, because of water. And there's a couple of things that you need to think about when you're doing this technique. Number one. You're going to have some bubbles on top of the other, so you have to decide where, if you want a bubble that's going to sit on top, but a smaller one underneath it, you're going to want to mask off the area, and I'll show you. Let me get my inks out, and I want to tell you, in fact, I'm going to move this because I don't need it, and I don't need it. I'm going to start with... This, you want to keep a super light hand as well. And I'm going to have all my inks open. And when you sit down to decide to do this, you want to decide on your color orientation and you want to keep it that way. So I'm going to start out with, well, let's see, like we did this one. I'm going to start out with a corner bubble right here. So I take my pencil. You see? Okay. And take my pencil. I'm just going to draw a very light line around here. Like yay. And then I'm going to take my eraser and erase most of it away. The point of it is, is normally bubbles will have kind of a shadow. And it's going to be too much work to try and add a shadow in. You, you, you know, we're not fine artists here. Well, at least I'm not. I'm no expert, that's for sure. So now I've just got a really light, light, light line. See it okay? I don't know what's wrong with this light. I'll try here. Nope. Okay. So now that I've got my light line, I know which template I'm using. I'm just going to lay the template down. And I always start at the top with the pink. I'm just going to dab my pink. And I'm going to dab it off over on this side because we just want a light application and you're basically going to go around a third of it. Okay, and I'm going to grab my tumble glass. And I'm going to go get it into the pink. If you do anything, you want to be a little heavier along the edges. But now the Wilted Violet, you want to be super careful with. And I'm not even going to go in and ink it because I was using it before and it's got plenty of ink on it. Okay, so you got that blob of a mess there. Alright, now what you want to do is you want to go into your white pigment ink. And you want to just make a circle. Almost to the edges. There. There's bubble number one. Okay. 
And if I can figure out how to speed this up, <laughs> I will in <laughs> post-production. So I'm going to put the mask here. Just stick that on there. And I want to make another bubble. I want it to come out a little more, but I still want it. Now my mask slipped away from me. They lose their sticky after being on the oxide ink. Now almost to the edge. Okay. I take the pencil. Very light mark. If you don't have die cutters or anything, you can cut out circles. I'm going to go in and erase that line mostly. You want to leave just the faintest bit there. You don't want to completely erase it. And get all the eraser goober off of there. And remember, I'm going to lay this right back down around that line. And remember your color orientation. So we started with the pink here. And then we came in with the tumble glass. And you almost make like there's a blank triangle in the middle. And a wilted violet. Can you see just like a blank triangle in the middle? And then I'm going to take and just dab just on one corner here because I don't want to wreck my whole white ink pad. I'm going to start from the center and then just blend out. Bubble number two. Okay. So I want, now I think I'm going to do, because I'm, ugh, i got to erase our goobers. Yeah, if you get goobers on there, that's what the Tombow Mono eraser is for. I want a tiny portion of a bubble just right here off the edge. And so for that one, I'm just going to use the pink. It's very faint. I didn't even draw a line. I'm just trying to fill in the space there. And let's see here. Let's go in. I'm going to do my mask again. I'm going to go in with the medium-sized bubble. Just kind of lay that down. Where might the pencil go? How does that happen? Did you guys see it? Huh. Oh, here it is. Just lightly draw a line. Boy. As soon as I want to show you guys, I make all kind of mistakes. And then I'm just going to erase out that line very lightly. And I'm going to go back in. Lay down my makeshift stencil. I'm losing everything here. in with my Kish Flamingo, just on this one, oops, don't slip away from me, just on this top one third, go in with my tumble glass, oh my gosh, try and hold everything down with the other hand, come in with my wilted violet, And then come in with my white. See what the white does is it just kind of calms those colors down. But it kind of leaves still some darkness on the outer edge. So now we've got three bubbles. Hey! <laughs> okay. And so, let's see here. I'm going to want a full bubble right here. So I'm going to put a mask. Because I want this bubble to sit on top. And that's what I was talking about, the orientation. And so now I'm going to make another bubble right here. Draw with the pencil. Erase. Again, very light hand with the erasing. You need that little bit of darkness. 
to make them stand out. Go back in with my bubble stencil that I made here and the same color orientation so after a while you don't even need to dip these just gonna do the top third the tumble glass and you do want to overlap them and wilted violet and then my white your white dauber will get not white anymore that's okay if you want to you can do the same thing with a piece of paper towel just like yay and now see when I take off this mask I can put my bubble there that I want for that you want to kind of match it up and overlap it just the slightest bit can you see there's just a ooh. Ugh, sorry about that. Well, my hand's in the way. You just want a, the slightest bit showing there. And then, see back out here. Same. Giving another dip, dabbing off on my spare paper. Going in with the Kiss Flamingo. Going in with the Tumble Glass. Going in with the Wilted Violet. The main thing you want to remember is if you're doing this and you want to choose different colors, make sure that they all blend together nicely. Um, another good combination on here is uh, Peacock Feathers. It's gorgeous on there, but it's a little bit dark. I'm going to come in with my white, and I'll go ahead and use my paper towel. And if you use a paper towel, then you don't have to worry about contaminating your ink pad. Just give it a swirl here. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I think we need a teeny one here. Now what happens if you have two that you need to mask off? <sighs> Don't. Just do one. And put the other one on the very edge. I mean, bubbles have all kinds of orientations, don't they? Okay, that's a teeny tiny one. Strong pencil. This is a General's Layout pencil. I don't know. I keep looking for something that I can smudge really well, but I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm not an artist, so I have no idea. Okay. This does help kind of smudge it a little bit because ideally you've got a smudged outline here to show some more depth. When you're working on the teeny tiny one, the same principle, you just want to stay right close to the edge. Do our tumble glass. Do our wilted violet. No, is that what it is? Yeah, wilted violet. And then come in and dab the white. There. Nice little bubble configuration there. Let's do a couple more. Look what I did here. Guess what, though? I've got my white ink. <laughs> More things you can do with white pigment ink. That's where I get for having messy hands. All right. I want to come in with another one off the edge here. And I don't think I'll have it touching anyone. Guys. I'm telling you. Okay, racer. I'm the most absent minded crafter. And messy, too. I was just talking with Tracy Schultz this morning, and I was saying, don't try some of these techniques with the alcohol ink, it will ruin your fingernails. And she said she puts on gloves. <laughs> I was laughing. I'm like, eh, I'm too lazy to find my gloves. I don't like them anyways, and they just feel like I need to be. Sorry about that. Didn't realize my camera was out of whack there. I must have bumped it. 
Uh, here we go. Don't you guys love watching me adjust my camera? Okay. Did I do my pencil mark? Yeah, I did. And then with my pink. And then with my tumble glass. It'll move on you. I've got to have about eight fingers. Coming in with my wilted violet. And coming in with my, I'm going back to my dauber, my white, just for the interest of time. What do you think? It's pretty fun, huh? Not, not hard at all. Okay, I think I want to have, give me another mask here. I'm going to want this bubble sitting on top. So I'm putting a mask there, and let's go in with the big bubble right here. When you get on the edges there, it gets tricky. And don't worry about where the mask is, because you don't need the line there. Okay, now I'm going to hold that down, because it's... Like I said, those sticky notes lose their stickiness after sitting on oxide ink for a minute. <sighs> Is this just about as easy as you can imagine? I lamented over trying to figure it out, trust me. Okay, so we know our pink orientation is usually up here. Our tumble glass is usually down here. And our wilted violet is usually right here. And our white gets plopped in the center. Now I can come in with that bubble. Is that the right one? Yep. And just like I said, barely overlap there, where you could hardly even see it at all. Wow. See where you can hardly see it right here? Okay, let's zoom back out. And pencil mark. See, once you've done your pencil mark, it just barely touches. These, this one's weird because the eraser's kind of wobbly. These are dollar store mechanical pencils, by the way. And you can use them. It does... The only thing I don't like about using a mechanical pencil is if you accidentally press too hard, then you leave a, I don't know, an indentation in your work. I don't like that. I hate it when my die cutting machine does that. All right. We're getting there, folks. We are getting there. And I just grabbed my white dauber. I'm an idiot. Okay. Tumble glass. And our... See, it's shadow of my hands in the way. But I have to hold on here. <laughs> Wilted violet. And let's go in with the paper towel trick and wipe that out. Oh, yes, love, love, love it. Mm. I need something down here, don't I? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and mask this one off. I know I have a mask piece for that other one, but I lost it. Ugh, whatever. Oh, there it is. No, that's not it. Mm, okay, well, never mind. Make do, make do. And do right here. Pencil mark. Eraser. Now I'll be trimming some of this off as well.
I think that's the longest part is doing that. Okay. Make sure I'm grabbing the right dauber. See what I mean? Paper wants to move on you. You need eight hands to hold it. You stinker. Moved on me again. There we go. I'm going to get that out of my way while I do the white because it only needs to be in the center. So there you've got it along the bottom here. And like this one, you could do a couple more up the side. And I did, you know, I was looking at my stamp and I was thinking, okay, how do I want to situate this? And I decided that I would have her sitting on top of a bubble. So I'm going to give her a bubble right here to sit on top of. And here we go. Pencil mark. An eraser. It's the cool thing about doing these is you can think about how you want to do your scene and then make your bubbles accordingly. Goober in there. Ugh. The only thing about erasing is it makes a mess. Okay. And we're going to go in with our pink. The bigger ones by far more fun because you can actually see the colors form as you look what I just did. Do you see what I did? I <laughs> put the wrong color. I mean, it's still the right color, but it's in the wrong orientation to the rest of the bubbles. We'll live with it. Okay, now I've got a bubble there for her to sit on. And let me just get all these things out of the way. And currently I'm done with all my oxide inks. And the um, white is a pigment ink, by the way. I don't think they make any other kind of white. But anyway. So, stamps. Stamps I'm going to use today. Um, this is Azalea from Fairy Hugs. And see, she's going to sit right here. And this is how I do these. And I think most people do. I'm just going to take and take this black portion and, and set it where I want it. Uh, I think I want, yeah, I think I just want one foot touching. And then I'm going to use the lantern tree, also from Periode Stamps. And I'm going to use its little thing to kind of decide where to put stuff. And I think I'll have her going. No, I don't want that. Hmm. Okay, so mostly you're not even going to see the tree branch, the, uh, the tree trunk. You're just going to see the these branches. Okay, so decided how I want it now I'm going to get out my stamping platform and I personally am using the Tim Holtz I just got it and y'all I love this thing and let's see if that'll slide past there let me just oh I can zoom out and I've got these little Sizzix sticky things on here and one thing I learned uh, doing this one is after I had done her, the paper had warped to the point where I couldn't get all of the tree. So I'm going to start with the tree this time. And what I do is I just find the little squares on these things and line it up. That way if I do have to put it back in, I know where to put it. They're kind of losing their sticky because I've got an embossing powder all over them. The nature of how I work. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little magnet right there. I'm going to get my embossing tools ready. And 
We did silver last time. Yeah, I think we'll stick with silver. Where is she? I lost it. The silver? That's platinum. Ah. Nah, not platinum. There it is. I've got my little tidy tray, my silver. This is, uh, wow, silver, super fine metallic. I've got my first marking pad, and I've got my little blobby pillow thing. I'm just going to blob it out. And I usually will turn on my heat embossing tool right about now to get it warmed up. Get my orientation here again. there. It's going to go here. So what I do is I leave that lay there because this is a big old stamp. And then I kind of match up. Get Press down. Ugh. This guy does not want to stick. Get these out of my way. And put the burst marking all over the tree. Please don't fall, tree. It thinks it's going to fall. I'm just going to put a little bit of ink on the and it moved on me. Well, whatever. This is the pitfalls of stamping with a big old stamp. Is it does get floppy on you. You don't clean the embossing powder off like you're supposed to. That would be on me. Okay, let's kind of, I'm going to kind of hang on to it. And there we go. And I have my own little tool that I made. I didn't bother with any glitter. I just stuffed some cotton in there. I didn't have enough glitter to fill it. I'm going to make sure this is nice and good and stuck on there. And it did not touch at all. At all. So... What are we going to do about that? First, we're going to turn that noisy thing off, and we're going to find a way to raise this. See, I've already made a mark, so I don't want to... I'm just going to take a couple of pieces of paper and toss them under here. Same size. See if that does the trick for me. And I'm going to need one more stamp. Not not happy with that. I let my ink dry a little bit much while I was messing around trying to get that paper high enough. I'm not sure why it does that. If anybody knows, please let me know in the comment section why I would need to have pieces of paper underneath. It does not with all stamps, but this one it does. All right. There we go. Oh, I'm happy. Pick this up. And sprinkle it on. And I've got a double impression. Yeah. I'm 
spots here where my ink apparently decided to go everywhere. That's all you do is take a tiny brush and just kind of clean it up. Clean up where those double impressions are. Some of them I'm okay with. Okay, yeah, I'm good with that. I don't know about you, but I have long hair, and I hate getting really close to the embossing gun because it's grabbed my hair before. Tree is done. Now let's see if we can get her without having to hold these papers up because I need a way to hold my paper down. And this tree off of here, I'll clean that up later. It's dirty, it needs a bath. Okay, I want her sitting right about there. Gonna hold that there with my finger, lay her on, make sure everything's matched up. Okay, close my lid down on it, lift it back up, get that out of the way. Okay, where did that bag go? See, this is how I work. I spend most of my time looking for missing things. Well, we're just going to hope for the best here. Since I'm filming, I'm not going to... Here we go. I don't want to waste your time looking for things. Let's see, I've got some kind of goober there, honestly. That's how I roll. So I've still got her on my stamping platform. I'm going to douse her with some Versamark. Yeah, she's not one to stick either. I don't know what's going on here with my stuff. You better stick. Don't you fall. Look at her. She's trying to fall. No falling. Ugh. Press down really well. No. Let's see. I really did not get a good impression. I'm just going to put one piece of paper behind here and try not to move anything because that's what happened a minute ago. So, everyday crafter problems. Um, you know, I see a lot of the big ladies and gentlemen who never seem to have any problems <laughs> like the oh. Might help if I get that out of the way. But this is an everyday problem for me. Okay. That's going to have to do because it lifted my paper. It looks good. Looks good. Okay. Much better. Okay. There we go. Something that actually worked. All right, let me get this out of my way. going to take my Tombow eraser. Where'd it go? Oh, y'all, I'm telling you. I had it two seconds ago. Anyway, 
I'm not going to worry about it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim this down. And I don't want to lose a lot of her wing there, but I'm going to need to find that eraser. And so I'm going to trim this side down. I'm going to trim it to four by five and a quarter. Because I always start with four, uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. Wait a minute, that's five and a half. Okay, there we go. By five and a quarter. And then the last thing that I like to do, just to kind of accentuate, is to go ahead and darken the edges. So I'm going to take my Catch Flamingo for this one and just dance it along the edges. Not an intense operation, just a quick little dance. Just gives it that little bit of extra. And you could put bling on here too, it would look really cool, but um, I didn't. Get my paper towel, wipe this off. Now that's just going to bug the crud out of me if I don't get that cleaned off. Well, <laughs> never mind, not going to waste your time. Here's the clean copy. This one, you got your shiny fairy. You can add a little sentiment down there. Y'all know how I feel about sentiments. Kind of got that a little dark there. Again, not a big deal. I'm going to be taking my razor to it, and if in doubt, you can always take your white pigment ink with your paper towel and clean it up a little. Can't get that spot out, though. Saved my life. Mm, not bad. Oh, there we go. Yeah, kind of. There you have it. There's your bubbles. And that was the main thing, was to learn how to make those bubbles. And hopefully this helped you learn a new trick today. <laughs> like you're a dog. Learn a new technique today. I uh, thank you for visiting my channel and taking the time to watch. I apologize it's a longer video. Um, if you do like what you see, please hit the like button and subscribe. And y'all have a great rest of your day.